Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and next Blockbuster employees rewatching some of our favorite movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. And this week, we're taking it to the courts. That's right. We're doing Space Jam, going hard in the paint. <laughs> <laughs> So we're doing the 1996 version, obviously, but we all know the new one is coming out very soon with LeBron. So we had to take it back to the classic. So as you all probably know, unless you were living in, I don't know, a bunker, um, Space Jam is a movie with starring Michael Jordan and the cast of Looney Tunes. Um, I don't know why they made this movie, but we'll <laughs> we'll talk about this later. <laughs> so apparently aliens come down. There's a, a, a challenge and all the other basketball players in the league are being chosen. And Michael Jordan is picked for the Looney Tunes team. That's all I got to say. I don't want to ruin the rest of the plot for you until we go into it. There was a plot. Well, <laughs> Well, let's, you know what, Jackie, you know, we gotta, we gotta introduce our, our special guest and our ratings. But before that, if you want to watch this movie, you can actually find it on HBO max makes sense since that's where the second one's going to be showing. So, (laughs) um, but before we go into our ratings rewinds, we have a special guest. We have my work wife. Well, former work wife, uh, (laughs) Amber is here and she loves her some Space Jam. (laughs) I do. Oh my God, my voice. That's terrible. I do love Space Jam. Um, I am Amber. Hello. Thank you for having me. Amber's talents also include awesome trivia, fun dressing up Halloween outfits, banging teaching skills. Hey, you know what? I try. I do what I can. (laughs) I appreciate the hype. You know, that's what I do. Got to hype you up. (laughs) So thank you for joining us because definitely Jackie and I are at a deficit handicap because uh, sports and um, we don't know what the hell is going on in this movie. We definitely have not watched it as many times as you have. No. Oh, oh Lord. (laughs) Too many. (laughs) But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play it on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Eh, Okay, but nothing to write home about. Same day rental. Trash, straight up trash. Okay, Danielle, what would Y2K Danielle give Space Jam? The bitch don't remember. She sleep. <laughs> <laughs> don't remember watching the movie. I know I watched it, but I literally had maybe one recollection, which was, oh, Bill Murray's supposed to come. <laughs> that was your takeaway that that was the only thing (laughs) takeaway of the whole movie yes is bill murray bill murray yeah so i think i'm gonna go with a two-day rental because at least i remembered something (laughs) um yeah that's that's all i'm gonna say two-day rental for me um i would give it a five-day rental i did watch it quite a bit i also in um middle and high school had a Charles Barkley obsession and so you know my boys in it and so I would watch it over and over just the just to see Sir Charles Uh (laughs) Amber what would your rental be uh uh, would buy it I did I owned it (laughs) on VHS I watched it all the time I wore that tape out Space Jam is my jam well, I'm glad because I got questions, Amber. <laughs> I may or may not have answers. We'll see. <laughs> I definitely have questions. Like, who funded this movie and why? <laughs> <laughs> so I will say 
I don't need any hate email. We don't get any email. We don't get voicemails. We don't get any. Uh, we got a <laughs> one star rating on I Apple. I saw that. If I find you in these streets. Well, and they didn't even, they just did the stars. They didn't actually comment. Drive by. Yes. Drive by um, hate. You know, it was a hate crime. I would <laughs> like to report it to the Popo <laughs> and trace this mofo. They hate the 90s and they hate fun. Well, if you guys disagree with this, please go on Apple and write us a review because we're very sad that someone hated us this much. We are, but this is legit. Okay. I really (laughs) like the songs. I wish someone else sang R. Kelly's songs because I really, really love the songs yeah I can't get on board with what a trashed human he is but I mean like I believe I can fly remix to ignition world's greatest they're all so good I need someone to remake them so I can enjoy them right now I'm playing the (laughs) remix to ignition in my head I can't play it on Spotify but it lives here it lives here (laughs) So I'm just saying I'm going to talk about I Believe I Can Fly. And please know, hey, I understand. It's It sucks because, like, as soon as the movie starts, that's what song. And I literally wrote, oof, we're not off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> because R. Kelly is 100% um, canceled. And there, we'll get to a part in the movie because I feel like they ha- they did go and edit a part out like censored it and um, I feel like they might have they at least should have limited the song to maybe one play but it plays twice in the movie yes but before we really jump into the movie we gotta talk about this soundtrack because I may not have remembered the movie as me watching it but a bitch knew how to drop it like it was hot to quite a bit of these songs oh it was so good okay let me read because I screen capped the soundtrack. <laughs> no, a bitch be pre- prepared. So we have Fly Like an Eagle by Seal. So good. Peace Jam by Quad City DJs. Oh, get that jam. Blah, 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 jam. <laughs> I don't know words. Hit Him High by Busta Rhymes. Uh, that Listen, song was legit. A it fun was. Bop. I want that song to play every time I walk into a room. Like, <laughs> yes, I love that song. <laughs> Uh, For You, I Will by Monica. Giving You You All I Got by Robin S. I Turn to You by All for One. Robin S. Is that, that's not Robin. I don't think so. Okay. She looks, from what tiny picture I can see, she kind of looks like a zombie on the CD cover. Oh, okay. Um, That's the Way I Like It by Biz Marquis. Mm -hmm. In the Spin Doctors. Mm. It uh, was wait, wait. and the Spin Doctors. Yes, it says so, Bismarcky, it comma Spin Doctors. This is a really good ass soundtrack. It really, it, is. it really is. I'm only halfway through. We're only on track. Oh, I did them odds and evens. Um, so I'm halfway through. The Winner by Coolio. I believe I can fly by R. Kelly. Ugh. I know. I found my smile again by D'Angelo. Mm. Upside mm-hmm. Down by Salt and Peppa. Ugh, classics. Basketball Jones by Chris Rock and Barry White. There are some odd what? compilations on here. We need to re- wait a minute. We need to listen to that one. I don't know. Basketball Jones. Maybe at That's- the end we'll pull it up so we can listen to the smooth sounds of Barry White and Chris Rock. That's a <laughs> super weird combo, but okay. All My Days with Jay-Z or Kelly. And someone I can't also I can't read and then bugging by Bugs Bunny <laughs> of course he had to lay down some tricks I know but like this whole soundtrack is the tits so good so good okay so we start out as Danielle said I believe I can fly is playing tiny Michael Jordan is practicing his shots and his dad is encouraging him he can be anything he wants to be and he's going through the list of like I'm going to play for the NBA. I wrote MJ straight manifesting in this scene. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
He's going to play for North Carolina. That's who, where he played, right? Target. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and I hundred percent cried because it was, cause you know what happens to his dad. I was like, I can't do this already. <laughs> Not in space jam. <laughs> And his dad says, you're going to go to, or no, he says, North Carolina is a real fine school. You're going to get a good education. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it goes through a montage of just Michael Jordan, Michael Jordaning it up, flying through the air, making those dunks, uh, going to the Olympics. And then he decides to retire to play baseball. So watching those scenes, like I, I now accept Michael Jordan being the greatest. And I knew it then, but the problem was I was a huge Carl Malone and um, John Stockton. Yes. L- love both of them. Love them so much. And they couldn't, you know, Carl couldn't get his damn ring because MJ was out here with a 99 degree fever. Of, well, maybe like 199. I don't know. <laughs> playing for his life out there. Like winning by himself. I was frustrated so I I very much hated on Michael Jordan for a good majority of his career because I very much love those two like you like Charles I mean I never hated Michael Jordan I respected his game but he was no Charles Barkley (laughs) (laughs) I don't know I think I just like underdogs I understand I respected him I understood what he was about but damn and he was so arrogant about his shit when we stick out his tongue, that way. I mean, he knew he he knew he was a shit. He knew it. Well, yeah, but he was. Yeah, I know, but you know, <laughs> just let my man get his ring, man. <laughs> Anywho, after real fine school, he talks about he's gonna play in the NBA, then he's gonna play baseball, then he does his his dunk in the backyard that goes into the theme song montage. Right, oh, so good. And so then good. he's at the baseball field. No, he retires. He says he's retiring mm-hmm. and that he's going to play baseball. Everybody says, say what now? Mm-hmm. And then he's on this baseball team. Yes. And it everyone sucks. is, yes. And everyone is starstruck. And I want to know. Yes. I did, know the the, question. did the umpire hear the catcher cheating? He had he to have. And he should have called him out on that shit. Like yeah. if they could hear each other, the umpire had to hear. Yeah. Right? Everybody was in on this this scam, man, because for baseball, this was the best ratings boost they were ever going to get. So everybody knew this is putting more money in my pocket. I'm not saying shit. Michael, do what you do, you know? Does that makes sense. He was playing for the minor leagues. He wasn't even in the majors. <laughs> Whatever. Every, they were getting on ESPN probably more than they ever got because Michael was playing. I guess. And then a very young Ahmad Rashad was reporting about how terrible Michael was at baseball. Yeah, they, I mean, they really put him through the ringer. So he's out there um, on the baseball field. Everyone. up. Yeah, everyone's pretty much, you know, making it as easy as they can for him. It's almost like, you know, he definitely had special attention. The the owner, um, I don't, okay. The guy from Seinfeld. Uh-huh. I don't know his real name. I don't Stan, know. Stan Podolak. <laughs> <laughs> what's no what's his name on Seinfeld because I feel like everyone Newman was, yes yeah. I, Newman <laughs> so my question was like who gave him this role because I'm thinking out of all the comedians all the people that are out there at this time why him so newman is told to give michael jordan even more special attention and he's the pr person for the the barons which is the name of michael jordan's uh, i've worked in pr we are not driving people around chasing them into to looney tune world like (laughs) what is this he's committed to his craft danielle okay (laughs) Anywho, so he drops Michael Jordan off, which in the most awkward car ever, because you know Michael is tall as hell. 
Mm-hmm. And he's in that tiny ass convertible. Yeah. That's not good for his knees. Nope. <laughs> too big. Right, right, Amber? It's too <clears throat> damn big. And then he's attacked by a bulldog named Charles. Is that a coincidence? Did they name him after Barkley? Oh, yeah. That they was, did. Yeah. Barkley? Bull- yeah, the, the dog's full name is Charles Barkley. Oh, is it? I just yeah. saw on the doghouse that said Charles. <laughs> so I put two and two together. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets attacked by this dog and i wasn't sure if that lady was his mom or his mother-in-law that came out to get the dog i literally have had the same question since 1996 <laughs> i feel like it's his mother-in-law because he would have probably hugged her or said mom if it was his mom i agree, That's yeah, just my I agree with that assumption um, and then there's a buttload of kids coming out of a minivan and um, his his wife and two other kids are joined. And so he sees his kids. Because as soon as I saw the dog and I saw the house, I said, where are them kids at? I was, for, you know, for sure. mm-hmm. I just knew maybe it was starting to come back to me from what I didn't remember. Um, and he pretty much tells his wife that he's stuck at his game and his son is upset because his batting average is off or something. I feel like his son's probably better at baseball than he Oh, is. yeah, because his son's batting mm-hmm. average is 685 and Michael Jordan's is 214. Damn. Ouch. Yeah. If it was Ouch. bowling, he might have been doing better. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to what you know, Michael. Yeah, man, he's so talented, but like. I don't want to see LeBron lace up and do football because he could do it too. You know, like, yeah. Let, yeah. just be thankful for the the things you got. Um. So then we transition. Well, I guess before we see Michael even getting home, we're introduced to, hold on, Swack Hammer. What? Voiced by Danny DeVito. Is that Danny DeVito? On, on oh. His name is Swack Hammer? Yes. <laughs> the big old c- cigar smoking monster. Exactly. And he's on like an alternate planet that is animated. Moron and he Mountain. runs, yes, he runs an amusement park called Moron Mountain. And people are saying it sucks. And so he needs more entertainment. So he sends his little wormy lackeys. Yeah, to I was go. Gonna say his little minions, mm-hmm. but that's a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's where they got the concept for the minions. They are very minion-like. They are very yeah. minion-y. Um, and so they see the Looney Tunes on the TVs behind him, and then they're like, "Well, we'll just go get the Looney Tunes and like enslave them and make them perform at Moron Mountain." I felt a little tinged the way, the way they were saying slavery so quick. I know. And, I know. I, and then they went after them black men on the court. I was like, <laughs> yep. It's a I made dangerous. a list of things that, that don't quite hold up. And that was one of them. Was well, like, the amount of smoking in this movie does mm-hmm. not hold up. In a no. children, because you can't tell me this was an adult movie. No, mm-hmm. absolutely this was not. 100% made for children. You start off with him with the cigar. And there are other parts of the movies, the movie where they're smoking and there's guns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I guess the whole concept of Looney Tunes is real bad. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't age well. You got no. a rapist, you got guns. <sighs> so <laughs> we, we go from Moron Mountain and we see the little wormies go and try to uh, snatch up the looney tunes yeah it, mm-hmm. and, and in true looney tune form they alley-oop them and they're like hey there's this clause i just wrote right now that says that bug that, that bug <laughs> he's, he's so always smart. thinking <laughs> so they're like well we'll challenge you in something and if we win then you guys can't steal us essentially right. yeah and so they're like well these are tiny little guys and they're short and they have short arms so let's play basketball is their whole thing is like we can beat them in basketball now when i tell you when the kids we transition back to michael jordan's house the kids are actually watching looney tunes porky pig in a panic is like my favorite thing ever (laughs) i feel like if anything were to represent my anxiety 
that's what it would be. Yes. <laughs> Just Porky Pig. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. A hundred percent. I feel a kinship to him, you know, in that state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Porky Pig is like, we need help. We need MJ. Everybody need to get to the... (laughs) I don't even think they identify they need Michael Jordan yet. Mm -mm, No, No. he's just panicking. Yeah, he's just full on ready to... (laughs) Who's the right man for the job? (laughs) I feel like the Roadrunner would have been too fast and they wouldn't have heard him. Tasmanian Devil would have gotten there fast as well, but still the language barrier there. You know, he was the the right man to do what he could get done. Um, so then we go to the Knicks Suns game. Yes. And the, the Monstars or what becomes the Monstars, they are nerd lux when they are tiny. That's what they're nerd lux. Nerd lux. Um, they decide they need talent. I, it was either them or the Looney Tunes. I think it was them. They were listening to a reel of, basketball from like the 50s oh, okay. or something. Okay, yes, mm-hmm. that's, that's what right. it was. And then it would then it said something about the NBA. So then we go to Madison Square Garden, correct? And they're yeah. playing the Knicks or the so Knicks got, are playing the Suns. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you got you got Charles Barkley who gets attacked first and then then you get Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing. Because they say there's him. That's the killer. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. my killer right there. Oh lord. <laughs> I love Patricia Heaton saying <laughs> this dude's doing something weird in his jacket and her husband's <laughs> like shut up whatever and i'm like oh, yeah okay and that was dan castanella who is um from the simpsons yes right? I, mm-hmm. I so like yeah there's some comedians in here randomly and i'm just like again we went with newman yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, so they're watching oh and i noted that when they're walking to their seats, the nerd looks are all piled on top of one another in a trench coat so that they can sneak into the game like little rascals. And <laughs> they walk like Edgar from Men in Black. <laughs> oh my God, Edgar. <laughs> like, is that you, Edgar? You need some sugar water? Sugar water. <laughs> Maybe that's where they got the um, inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> They sneak out, they steal Charles Barkley's talent during that game, and they also steal Patrick Ewing's talent during yeah. that game. And then they proceed to do it to many other Muggsy Bogues. Muggsy Bogues. Sean Bradley and Larry Johnson. Oh. Okay. Why did it seem like there were more? <laughs> there were only okay. five. They only needed five. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the other basketball teams get real nervous yeah they're like we're not they're wearing gas masks where did the lakers get gas masks (laughs) (laughs) and they were like world war ii gas masks like they were not very like looney tune motif in the real world and yes this is bizarre it it also just felt like wow they knew about rona the 96 they were ready (laughs) it was very like oh because they were talking about like what if this is a worldwide thing yeah how, how fast is it spreading i'm like this hits too close to home and <laughs> give me your gas mask lakers so then we are we're, we're back in looney tunes world well we do get a glimpse of michael jordan in his hotel room because he must be on the road for his i'll use quotes baseball career yeah um and i love He's how they just, up with newman yeah newman comes and check in on him but i love how literally he names every single endorsement he has yes, yes. nike mcdonald's um haynes haynes wheaties wheaties yeah he like i was like wow i bet it was part of his contract. They're like, oh, you're going to do this big movie. How are we going? We're going to endorse it, but how are you going to get us in there? And he's eating McDonald's. Yeah. In the, yeah, hotel, in the hotel room. room. That man, so much money. So much money. Um, and so then we see the, the um, guys from Looney Tunes trying to get ready for practice. And by this time, what do we call them? The little the, aliens? They're nerd lux. The nerd lux, you know, they're like, hey, can we use the court? We're going to play. 
and man looney tunes were talking so much shit (laughs) they were not right and they're like yeah y'all need to practice blah 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 and when they put them hands on their balls and they become mm-hmm. those big old guys. One, one ball. It was a basketball. <laughs> on their balls. <laughs> their own balls. <laughs> yeah. I felt like there were so many ball jokes in here. Yes. Oh my God. I was like, kids watching this, guys. And I, I mm-hmm. love that the animators made the Monstars look like whoever they stole the talent from. Why they did- suddenly had hair. Yes. Yeah. And why did Charles Barkley have those little, like, I don't know if they were freckles, but there was one point when his pants get pulled down. I was like, it looks like he's got like pimples on his booty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they took liberties. The, the nerd Lux took liberties as they transformed into the monsters. My favorite nerd luck was the blue one. Cause I thought yes. for sure he was high. Oh so yeah. Like 100%. 100%. Are you ready for this? Yes. The orange one, one was, his name was Pound, and he (laughs) stole Charles Barkley's talent. The green one's name was Bang. He stole Patrick Ewing's talent. Um, The red one was Not. He stole Muggsy Bogues' talent. The blue one was, was, yes, he was tiny. (laughs) Muggsy Bogues is only 5'3". He's, he's my really size. Good basketball he player. is. He's Amber size. <laughs> I love when he, he he's like, without my talent, I'm just. At least y'all are tall, <laughs> short, <laughs> and I don't know how to play. The blue one was Blanco, and that was Sean Bradley, and the purple was Bupkiss, and that was Larry Johnson. I also have heights for everyone because I was wondering, so I researched. Yeah, they're so tall. Like Patrick Ewing, is he the tallest? No. okay so Muggsy Bogues is 5'3 then it's Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley are both 6'6 Larry Johnson is 6'7 Patrick Ewing is 6'8 and Sean Bradley is 7'6 he is a foot taller than Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley okay well (laughs) now that we know the players they get their hands on the ball they turn into the mom stars and then bugs and company are shitting bricks because they're like wait we gotta learn how to play basketball we need more people <laughs> like what the hell and then we see michael jordan playing golf with bill murray and larry bird and my favorite quote from this scene was larry's not white larry's clear <laughs> i also love that I just by Bill, Bill Murray <laughs> and his umbrella hat. Yes. And he does try to say that he can't be in, he says something about not being an NBA because he's not black. And that's what causes that whole for him to say that. He was like, that's not true. He's like, Larry was in the NBA. He's like, Larry's not white. He's clear. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so Michael Jordan sinks his putt and goes to retrieve his ball. And apparently the Looney Tunes have a direct connection to the tin cup. And so they just kind of grab Michael Jordan by the hand and like, bitch, you're coming with me. I'm so, okay. So what you, what, what they're telling me in this movie (laughs) is that my favorite cartoon characters are just below the sewer lines under the earth. Yeah. So it goes humans, Ninja Turtles, and then Looney Tunes. (laughs) All right. Well, that's that's good to know. Maybe they're watching out for us. So they they grab Michael and take him back to Looney Tunes world. Yep. And the thing that really gets me about this movie. No, it's not that Newman's there. It's not even that Michael Jordan's acting. It's the fact that the Looney Tunes pull him into the cartoon world and this bitch ain't asked no questions except what do you guys need me for? Like, yeah. what is it? like there's no panic. Like, why are you cartoons? Did I hit my head? Am I dying? Like nothing. He just I, goes with it. I literally wrote down MJ never questions his own sanity. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a kid, if the kid had been brought into that world, it would have been like, no problem, right? Like, yeah, because their imagination is 
So now I'm wondering, does Michael Jordan know about this secret world? Like, is like once you get to a higher level of celebrity, you like start Danielle, to unlock the secret. Danielle, <laughs> we, we're, not, we're not going this route. I just want to know because he didn't ask no questions. So it just makes me think he knows something. All right, fine. If y'all want to know more about my conspiracy (laughs) theory, just, you know, hit me up. (laughs) So they pull Michael to the other side. They say they need to, you know, play this game. And when they take him to this beat up, basketball court indoor basketball court and then they all start what did they, they start to spit shine <laughs> they spit shine in tasmanian devil gets <laughs> he gets the mop and he starts going to work and then after he's done he's like lemony fresh i just <laughs> <laughs> that made me legit laugh out loud um and so they're getting ready to like you, you know, I, is this when he asks for his stuff first before they start to like play, or does he see them play first? I think the monsters okay, so, come first, right? Yes. And they call him. Do they call Baldy. Michael Jordan a wussy man? Yes. <laughs> and then they wussy call him Baldy. <laughs> and then they call him Baldy. He's like Baldy. I'm like, well. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, they're not wrong. The shoe I, fits. I feel like he would look so weird with hair. I mean, I've seen pictures with it. It's just like, uh, I think he he's one of those people that just look really good with bald. Yes, I agree. Bald. I agree with you. When do they make a dig at the Mighty Ducks? That's after Bugs and Daffy go to get, get his, his stuff. clothes. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And can we talk about Michael Jordan as a basketball? Because the monsters crumple him up and play him like a basketball in it. It makes me feel weird inside. I don't <laughs> like, like it. But square shaped. Like yeah, a it was super weird. I didn't like it. I don't think he did either, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he did either. So he sends Bugs and, and Daffy on a fool's errand to go get his lucky North Carolina shorts yes. and sneakers, which is weird because when they get to the house and they go, get to finally get to the room, why was one sneaker on like a table like a, and then the other one was up, up on like it. a shelf? Yeah, it was weird. Like, were they special shoes? Like, I was like, are do they even match? Why did they make it this way? Why weren't they in the closet? Why are they on things? Your, your guess is as good as mine, Danielle. I don't, I don't God know. God damn it, Amber. I need I don't answers. Know the answer. <laughs> Who's putting dirty ass shoes all over the place? I don't get it. Like maybe his kids are like playing with them. Did stuff. Charles Barkley, the dog Charles Barkley move them? I don't maybe. know. Maybe. My question is why, why are they allowing this dog to tear up their house? He knocked over a whole door. <laughs> Quality. The shorts in his mouth. Quality. Um, And so while they're in there gathering, right? What were you going to say, Jackie? I kind of fell asleep during this part, so I have nothing to add. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I'll keep going. Um, Okay. I was just (laughs) going to see what the next part I remember is. As they're loudly looking for these this gear, they find the shoes place in the weird places and um then they go to get the the shorts and the dogs got it in his mouth they close the door but the little girl when they were looking for the different rooms to find his stuff the uh, michael jordan's daughter um sees the characters again no questions not frightened i mean grabs her brother santa's real so why not yeah. the looney tunes she gets her brothers who are a little bit older. So again, I'm like, okay, now the here, okay, here's where the questions <laughs> are going to happen. Here's where it's going to happen. And though they say, oh, let us get you the, the shorts and get rid of the dog. Y'all do what you got to do. Tell dad we said, hey, like, <laughs> okay, okay. 
Well, they had already seen Porky Pig in a panic, so they oh, knew true. something was wrong. <laughs> They're like, whatever you need, we saw the state of Porky. <laughs> Shit must be good. You're right. Absolutely. Um, so then they head back, give Michael his gear. That's where the Mighty Ducks joke happens. Right. Yes. Because Daffy, Daffy Duck wants to call the their team name because he I, I'm definitely in line with Daffy. The first thing I want to know is outfits mm-hmm. we'll be wearing. And I want to know what our name is going to be. And so he got straight to the priorities. Um, and so he obviously said we should be called the Ducks. And Bugs, shady ass Bugs Bunny, <laughs> comes in with a line saying something about what kind of, did he say Mickey, Mickey Mouse, Mouse organization? <laughs> yeah, what kind of Mickey Mouse organization calls themselves the ducks and i said hold on sir the mighty ducks franchise is a gem i didn't it really is but there was there was a reason why they added that in and it was because uh warner brothers allowed disney to use their characters in who framed roger rabbit with the agreement that they could use Disney characters if they ever did an animated movie with the Looney Tunes. Well, uh, Disney changed hands or was under new management. And so when Warner Brothers went to them to ask if they could use the Disney characters, the new management company reneged on the agreement and was like, no, we can't, Uh, we're not sharing our characters with you. So they threw that line in there as like some shade. The shade of it all. I didn't know that that was the case. I thought the, like, I knew that there was an agreement, but I thought it was that they, for every scene that Mickey and Donald were in, they had to have the same equal amount of Bugs and Daffy. In, that in that, that was part of the agreement with Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. But it was also agreed upon, like, um mickey mouse was supposed to be the referee in space jam damn not marvin the martian i don't understand why disney wouldn't want that that was like because for them in the boy market they you know that's the whole reason they bought star wars and marvels Mm -hmm. because they didn't do well so why not take that opportunity oh disney the things you do so yeah i just thought that little you know shade was hilarious and then we're introduced to lola nobody says oh like nobody even referenced like oh we know lola like should everybody in looney tunes know who each other are and i'm sure bugs needs a love interest now and then in the dating scene when he's on his tinder he should have seen her at (laughs) least once you know but i don't i don't know how she's a stranger yeah so she sashays in in cooter shorts because that's what they were (laughs) that's what they were Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i just said to myself how the how the hell we sexualize him a goddamn cartoon bunny yep but she was the only one with real talent yeah she (laughs) was but the the as soon as she walked in and sash, I'm sorry, sashayed in, the music changed to that sexy kind of music. Mm-hmm. Bugs was feeling it all the way down to his tap of toes, and <laughs> he knew that he wanted some of this lady or sorry, bunny. I would say lady because that's what they were treating it like. I was it's just very confusing, and what also is irritating to me is that grown-ass men on the interwebs lost their shit when they decided to fix a wrong from this movie and decided to put Lola in some real fucking clothes Mm -hmm. and not over sexualize a cartoon bunny Mm -hmm. the internet went crazy they were hella mad that the cartoon bunny for a children's movie was getting clothes Mm mm-hmm I, I don't even oh, know yeah. what to say. That I was another say. another thing on my doesn't hold up list. Michael is the only one who ever comments on her skills as a basketball player. Everyone else throughout the rest of the movie is just like, oh, girl bunny. Like it, I can't say it's not realistic, but it's irritating. <laughs> I, I mean, the only good thing was that Pepe kept himself in the corner mm-hmm. somewhere. He did. 
because I will give him that. I'll throw him that phone. <laughs> yeah, that that would just that made me uncomfortable. I was like, Bugs, you dress in ladies' clothes all the time. Show some respect. So we skipped over the part where we see all oh, the sorry, five Jackie. basketball players. <laughs> Charles just wander in the streets. <laughs> he, <laughs> he doesn't have to do with himself. He very sadly goes up to a chain link fence and like hangs on it. And he's like, hey guys, can I play? Because he sees girls playing pickup basketball. He's got, okay, this is where we hear the song Basketball Jones. He's got a Basketball Jones. He wants <laughs> to play. He's very sad that he can't play anymore. <laughs> I used to fast forward through this scene every time because it made me so sad that they were so mean to him. <laughs> and now like looking back on it, if those girls followed the NBA at all, would they not have known that something had happened to him? He had had an episode on the court. <laughs> it was all over the news. That's how Michael knew about it. So he goes and he asks if he could play and they're like, yeah, sure. It's Charles Barkley. They're starstruck. And then he sucks because he has no talent. And they're like, you ain't Charles Barkley. You're just some wannabe. Be gone, wannabe. (laughs) Wow. So heartbreaking. I just, I don't want anyone to ever be mean to Charles Barkley again. Is that too much to ask? I am 100% on board with that. I don't know about that. Charles be saying some crazy foul shit. Maybe he need to watch his mouth every now and again and people will say stuff to him. I mean, no, maybe that was his not on the court. I'm talking about not on now. the court. I'm talking yes. about now. He 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 says in his some, present day real life. He really says some real stupid shit. I'm not uh, gonna like lie. quote Space Jam is arguably the most greatest sports movie ever. Does that even make sense oh, to me? Sweet <laughs> the grammar, the, the most grammar. greatest. I don't love him for his smarts, Danielle. (laughs) Clearly. Clearly. Anywho, Uh, so while he is having that interaction, the other were the, all four of them were like in the psych ward mm -hmm. getting tests run on them to see Mm -hmm. what, what happened. Yeah. And they're all walking. And then all the three tall ones hit their head on the door frame. Mm -hmm. And Bugsy Bogues is like, meh. That scene, was he walking or was he in a wheelchair? Because like one he, of them was in a wheelchair. Because he seemed mm-hmm. like he was floating. It was super weird. Watch that scene again. I was... So what it was is they were in front of a green square screen and they're like, pretend to walk so that we can get this track. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even do that. He bogues is not an actor. And so he was kind of <laughs> rocking from <laughs> side to side. <laughs> <laughs> he was floating all- Mugsy. I, I was so confused i'm like is he in a wheelchair what's happening okay no, thanks for clarifying no Mugsy. problem that was that was a uh a, a cinematic um trick gone wrong mm. <laughs> you know what i do love about this movie it gets straight to the point like there's 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 not like any scenes where I'm like they really could have just taken this out and made it so yeah. long no they really I mean maybe this Charles Barkley scene could have been taken out but clearly love Jackie loves it so <laughs> no, and then they show Charles in church yep Brian. yes <laughs> and he said I'll never date Madonna again <laughs> Madonna dated so many people so many people I had no idea and then uh, um we're back to I have, but I love my mama. Who said that? Oh, Muzzy. that it's Muzzy. in um, the in the psychiatrist's shrink, office. Yeah. I love how the shrink also um, covertly asks Patrick Ewing about his performance in the bedroom. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was I, like, I, one of those things I did not understand as a child, but now I'm like, oh, this is a child's <laughs> movie. People, <laughs> stop, stop put the shit in there and then we get back to stan gets to toontown somehow yeah oh yeah he was digging in the golf course and then he saw bugs and daffy walk by 
and followed them to Toontown. Yeah. So how do we get to Toontown? Do we get Um, there through the earth or do we just walk there? Is it on on top of the earth or under something? Bugs and Daffy went back through the Gulf hole. Okay. I don't know how Newman got there. He saw (laughs) them go in and then he was just there. And no one knows how Bill Murray got there. He tried to explain it with a a Hollywood joke, but yeah, this is so weird. (laughs) And then it's... They're getting ready for the game, right? Yep, mm-hmm. they're putting Are on they their jerseys. Are they still jerseys. practicing? Mm-mm. No, they're, they're getting very up. little practicing. They're, they're yeah. gearing up. Newman, or sorry, Stan Podolak gearing up, wanting to play. And he says, I might not be tall, but I'm slow. As if that's an <laughs> asset to the game. And then someone says, look at the chubby boy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> fat shaming's not nice. This is why kids, nope. this is where they learn it from. Um, yep. I do like, well, they name the their team the Toon Squad, Avi. And then I I love the tiny mouse. He's so cute. He's so He's adorable. So cute. Just telling his whole life story. <laughs> I mean, they yeah. took him out early though. So yeah. Early. And I grandma. Feel like that, yeah. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> she was a cheerleader in her old vintagey cheerleading yes. uniform <laughs> girt to I, her ankles i feel like tweety should have beat him up beat them up just for hitting grandma um mm-hmm. tweety was dramatic yes. yeah like when michael was kind of like eh, i don't know and tweety was like oh well I was hoping like he was just so <laughs> overly dramatic. I'm like, oh God, Tweety Bird. Yeah. Also Tweety in the iron lung when they were all like injured on the bench. Uh, <laughs> when they were injured on the bench, the rooster guy was a full on turkey fried up roast. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> Danielle knows the names of nothing. <laughs> no. Foghorn Leghorn also did not age well. No. 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 Not at all. Well, and I was watching it with my sister-in-law who is a speech language pathologist. And she's like, the Looney Tunes have a lot of speech impairments. <laughs> like that they do. There's a stutter. There's quite a few lisps of different varying lisps. Yep. Like Elmer Fudd. It, oh gosh. It's his own thing. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, not stellar. Can we talk about the Pulp Fiction moment? <laughs> yes for no reason i feel like i got kind of cut that's the part where i was saying that it it i think that maybe they uh went back and altered it because you mm-hmm. could hear the music you could see them and then it just then they're just gone yeah i think that they I edited wonder, that part amber you still got your vhs we need, to <laughs> investigate. No. We, we need myth busters on this one <laughs> I'm pretty sure the VCR ate that thing like 20 years ago. Oh man. RIP. And then uh what I call an old mom trick because the, the Looney Tunes oh. are doubting their abilities. So Bugs, was it Bugs? Yeah. Like yeah. rode on a water bottle with Mike's, a, it, Michael's secret, secret stuff. stuff and Which, then just made all the Looney Tunes drink it. That doesn't that, that doesn't doesn't have been sexual right. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so we just pour in Michael's special stuff in our mouth. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. And then oh. at one point, Stan gets inflated. Yes. yes. Balloon Stan. And then popped <laughs> and then fell on a bed. Yeah. And they, they, they were a man down. And who comes to the rescue but Bill Murray? Of course he does. And Danny DeVito calls him Dan Aykroyd. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I immediately thought of Amber because she has weird Dan Aykroyd knowledge for no reason. <laughs> I don't know why I know so much about Dan Aykroyd. Oh man. Um that there's a part where where they go after um Lola and Bugs like pushes her out the way and he's <sighs> flattened and they literally say is the, is this your man? And I die <laughs> laughing. And then like the way he like kisses her and steals like he's very 
the first aggressive. kiss is fine but the, the yeah the uh, the next one is very aggressive like he mm-hmm. like grabs her i was like ooh, rape culture yeah yes and just the fact that lola who is the most skilled player on the team aside from michael suddenly right. needs rescuing because someone's trying to like it just ugh. make it make sense do better yes. do better looney tunes 100 <laughs> percent. so so messed up and then um, so bill murray comes in to save the day he's like this is what we're gonna do and michael's like we're on defense he's like oh i don't do defense. he's like follow whatever <laughs> michael says <laughs> yes that's what we were gonna do before that sir and then another part that made me feel weird was <laughs> when michael's arm stretched really really far he became a looney tune he did i, I wrote in my book that is this assigned to what's to come with the matrix (laughs) (laughs) because he said you have to you know anything's possible this is not real and I said (laughs) (laughs) I see I know was it Danny DeVito's character that they made into a rocket ship and like Shots yeah, he he tried to, to he, he tried to go back on their their deal and said, "Now nah, I'm going to shackle you up anyways." Yeah. yeah, that I didn't talk about that scene where he tells Michael what he's going to do with him and he shackles like he's oh, gonna yeah. be shackled to and he'll be playing and losing and I'm like, "I don't I don't want to see a black man shackled in any no, no goddamn movie. Uh-uh. I don't care if it's a cartoon. Not cool with me." No nope. settling. And um then he pretty much Michael pretty much mind fucks everybody and tells the monsters, well, you guys are just gonna let him do this. And they realize they're bigger and mm-hmm. they're the ones who send him up in the rocket ship. We're going on a trip on a rocket ship. <laughs> and then Michael's like, okay, well, you have to give my friends back their talent. And they're like, but do we have to? And he's like, Yes, <laughs> bitch. I won. <laughs> I played this highly unnecessary basketball game for y'all. <laughs> Give my friends back their fucking talent. Oh, and then the Looney Tunes. No, I guess it's the Nerd Lux deliver Michael back to Earth because he's got a baseball game to attend. And no one's overly concerned that yeah. Michael Jordan gets out of a spaceship. A cartoon spaceship. Yeah. With, I believe I could fly. Yeah. Again. Okay. I was Free like, prize. It- is it Jesus coming? Like, what is this? Yeah. Also, something that didn't sit right with me was when they, they when Bugs and Daffy were at the house and they were like talking to the kids and I don't know, maybe it's just because I have been working with children, but it's, they're like, don't tell anybody. This is a secret. And I'm like, you don't say things like that to kids. And then no. the mom was like, uh, fuck no, you better tell me where your dad is. You're not <laughs> yeah. keeping yeah. secrets for me. I was like, ooh. that's not cute not a cute look that's definitely any creeper could have been like well remember in looney tunes they didn't snitch Uh, i feel like i need to call cps on (laughs) bugs right now yeah 100 percent. then we see the five basketball players in like a rundown gym and they're all just (laughs) what is that (laughs) like a no talent support group i don't know what's yeah. happening so they're all just sitting around and they're like guys we suck <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when mugsy bugs goes at least you guys are still tall yeah <laughs> tragic michael jordan shows up with the glowing basketball with all of their talents and has and to like talk them into touching it touch my ball touch my ball First of all, Michael Jordan was an ass the way he was trying to give them back their powers. Like, he's like, I shouldn't even do this. What? Mm -hmm. Those powers don't belong to you. And why did he suck up the powers when he was holding it? All five of them had to touch it before the powers went back. Maybe it's like you have to have a team of five to... Maybe. Because didn't all the aliens touch it at the same time, too? Yeah. Muggsy Bug says, it looks like something from Star Trek. And I appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie closes with Michael Jordan is back to basketball because he realized 
I guess from his time with the Looney Tunes that basketball is his one true calling. It's where his heart is. It's where his game is at. Clearly, <laughs> it wasn't in baseball. Nope. I Bill Murray was also upset at that basketball game that he was no longer playing. Yeah. He played uh, for 10 seconds in Looney Tune land and then had to ice down his knees. <laughs> so sad. Yeah. It grossed over 230 million worldwide, the highest grossing basketball film of all time. And it's also the highest grossing Looney Tunes film out of the other eight. What was the other movie that was with Brendan Fraser? Because I, I was I got that one confused because I said to myself because I was watching it by myself, self, when's Brendan <laughs> Fraser showing up? <laughs> and then I, I think realized that was just called different... <laughs> the Looney Tunes movie. <laughs> and then I realized that was not the same movie. I was very disappointed. <laughs> 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 this is one of the first movies to be filmed on a virtual studio which to have a non-actor do one of the first movies yeah. in a virtual studio that's he did, he did really he like did honestly well. i can't complain and say oh his act like michael jordan did his shit i mean it shouldn't be hard to play your fucking self but still but he was acting against nothing, which right. mm-hmm. season actors have come out and said, like, that is the it's hardest really hard. thing to do yeah. because you can't re- react to someone else. You have to, like, make it all up in your head. Yeah, he deserved an Oscar. Let's just put it out there. Mm-hmm. I would have voted for him. Or at least MTV been. Award. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think they had them then yet. Maybe they did. I don't know. And it said the concept for the movie originated from a series of highly popular Nike commercials for the Air Jordan shoes titled Hair Jordan and Aerospace Jordan, where Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan face off against Marvin the Martian and his alien henchmen in basketball to stop him from stealing Nike shoes. That was another question I had. I said, how y'all going to have Marvin the Martian being a referee? That dude, you know, he got skills. You know he does. Mm-hmm. Cause Mickey Mouse bowed out. Man, they should have made that damn rooster bin the 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 <laughs> why do you sound like him right <laughs> now? <laughs> they should have made him the referee. I couldn't think of the next word, so I kept saying the <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was not trying to impersonate a speech impediment. I really couldn't find the word. <laughs> and the movie's original promotional website can still be found online exactly as it appeared in 1996. Ooh, that should be interesting. I'm going to take a field trip there. Yeah. Anything else? I just, like, now I have such high standards. I'm interested to see what they're going to do with this. I, I now have to watch this damn LeBron version. I watched the trailer for it. It feels very different. Mm. Oh, different that's like. Om- that's om- ominous. It's, yeah. I don't different know. Like it, it felt heavy? more. No, it just <laughs> felt more like it's set in space this time. And so there's a lot of, I feel like, like zero gravity and stuff like, I don't know. It just felt very different from this one because it was very much rooted in the Looney Tunes world where this one is kind of rooted in a more futuristic feeling world um can we talk Very about this, the fact that the five guys that were in the movie never won an nba nba championship largely due be to michael jordan like i was saying earlier winning his six championships with the bulls so i mean Char- i feel like that's a testament to like probably their friendship with michael jordan that like this dude keeps fucking beating us but yeah we're gonna be in this movie because basketball yeah (laughs) yeah and money yeah probably all had kids too you know charles barkley and michael jordan are still close friends in the role of stan Uh uh-huh they wanted michael j fox that (laughs) I would have saw. I would have saw that movie multiple times. He would have brought so much more to this movie. So that was Space Jam. Danielle, what is your current day rating? Uh, well, in the after 
watching the movie and now that we've talked about it, I really feel like it's the same fucking score. I don't feel no different. <laughs> two day rental. I will agree. It's a two day rental for me. A lot of these movies I've done in some <laughs> form or fashion at Alamo Draft House. Amber and I attended a Space Jam cereal party pre-COVID. Ooh. Oh, Danielle, it was so much fun. It was <laughs> like just literally- Saturday morning cartoons in your cereal. Yes. That's so much fun. They set up boxes of cereal and jugs of milk and you just walked and like filled up your bowl and went back and you just watched Space Jam and ate cereal. We each awesome. ate like six bowls of cereal yeah. that day. <laughs> So yeah, I would say two day rental unless I was doing like a Space Jam event, Amber. (laughs) I'll disappoint me. Listen, I own it again. I do. (laughs) I bought it a few years ago. I still watch it. I watched it this morning, right before this. (laughs) So yes, always we all have buy it again. (laughs) Yeah, a hundred percent. No, no judgment here. No, judgment. I'll space jam all the time at my house, <laughs> but I will rock the shit out of that soundtrack. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah. That oh, soundtrack. Yeah. I'm definitely going to go twerk on my couch for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad that, that Scotty Pippen wasn't in this movie. If I were him, I'd be mad. You ain't going to put me on mad. Jordan. <laughs> Maybe you ain't gonna he put was me busy. On? Do it what? I don't know Scotty <laughs> Pippen things. Okay. He couldn't have been at the golf course with him and Larry Bird. I'm just saying that shit is a little awkward. That man helped you win six championships. Yeah. I don't have answers. At least we didn't have Dennis Rodman, Danielle. What can I say? That would have brought some flavor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he would have had some good one liners. That's actually a fit with them cartoons. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we did it. Amber, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had as much fun as we did. (laughs) I did. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Stay tuned for next week. We are going to camp with a double feature. So excited. Nowhere and heavyweights. I can't wait for this supersized version. Uh, (laughs) Camp Nowhere is my favorite camp movie and heavyweights is also a classic so stay tuned next week it'll be a longer supersized fun filled episode as usual if you have any comments or anything that you want any feedback questions hit us up on social media we are no more late fees on twitter instagram tiktok facebook youtube and we also have a hotline what's the number jackie You can leave us a voicemail if you have suggestions, feedback, anything. You just want to tell us a blockbuster story. You can sit and tell us your life story. We don't care. And maybe (laughs) you'll be featured on the podcast. The number is 909-601-6653. That's 909-601-NMLF. And we received our first quick drop. This came from our friend Samantha. You can find her on Instagram, lovefool.99. She has some wonderful 90s content. And if you like Josh Hartnett, she's your girl. So here is Samantha's hot take about our episode from last week, Legally Blonde. Hi, ladies. Jackie and Danielle. It's Samantha over at uh, lovefool.99. Just finished the Legally Blonde podcast. Absolutely loved it. You girls are amazing. Killed it again. I just have to say, Jackie, I love Elle's best friends. I think the way they're her hype men and they support her through the whole movie is such a good aspect to have in a movie that I don't think we get to see so often. Having, like, really a good group of supportive friends. Of course, you're going to have the douchebag ex the mean girls, but just having that Elle had a really good girl game, it's something so refreshing that I just don't think we get to see that often in movies, and this movie just meant a lot to me, I guess, in the middle school years. I was young in middle school growing up, and I think this is a great, fun movie for young girls, even today, to still watch, get motivated, have that bad bitch mentality that Elle Woods does. And yeah, you guys are amazing. Love the podcast. Love the episodes. Love you girls. 
that's my shout out for this week. Um, so my awesome friend Michelle got me um, some gifts for my birthday and I definitely won't just want to recommend it to everybody. First of all, check out her page called Fiesta Box, uh, the Fiesta Box. She makes these really cool um, boxes for different holidays, birthdays, where you don't have to go look for, you know, all the decorations, the plates, the forks, whatever. And they're all super themed and cute. Love them. Um, I enjoyed it with my family for my Thanksgiving and Christmas box and they were adorable. Anywho, she got me something called Diceify and there's these cool little you can't see it, but these cool little dice that um, help you pick a movie. I know, especially during the pandemic, when you're on your streaming channels, you don't know which movie you want to watch or how to pick it. Diceify actually helps you kind of streamline that process and no fighting over the TV. So I really enjoyed that. That makes it really easy for me to pick a new movie. And she got me the cinephile game, which is just down me and Jackie's wheelhouse. It gives you the name of an actor. And then you have to, you pick two actors and you have to kind of play the six degrees of separation (gasps) with them. So super fun. Can't wait to save that for a live. Yeah, we'll have to do this for a live 100%. So she got both of these, I think, from this Brooklyn brand called Uncommon Goods. And so if you're looking for a birthday present for a movie fanatic in your life, this is definitely the place to go. And don't forget to check out Michelle's um, page, The Fiesta Box. (laughs) And I have a shout out. Danielle and I have been trying to figure out the enigma that is Patreon. And so (laughs) shout out to our test group, which is just my group of friends, Hillary, (laughs) Stephanie, Amber, and Laura. And Laura has been instrumental because she listens to a lot of podcasts and (laughs) subscribes to some Patreons of like, oh, this podcast does this. It's really cool. Or check out this podcast, Patreon. So she's been really instrumental in getting us off the Patreon ground. So (laughs) definitely keep an eye out for that. If you're feeling generous and you love the podcast and appreciate our hot takes, then um, hit up Apple and give us some star ratings and a review. We'd really appreciate the love. Oh, we hit a milestone. We hit over a thousand downloads now, which is Woo-hoo! great. So we're super excited about that. And so have a great weekend. Yep. And until next time, be kind and rewind. <laughs>